So I'm here with Steve to talk about uh, project management tools, some of the, uh, well, what he judges to be essential tools and uh, some useful tools, I guess. Yeah. That's right. Uh, what I want to talk about is the tools that I think that a project manager should really <coughs> master mm -hmm. uh, if they're going to uh, do good work and work efficiently and quickly. Right, okay. So uh, what are we going to start with? Should we start with sort of what you some of the top essential tools. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the first one's a bit of a boring one, really, mm -hmm. which is the Microsoft Office tools. All right. Uh, so, for example, Word, you know, you've really got to master Word. And the key thing, I think, with uh, Word is mastering styles. Right. So uh, if you do that, then you can create a document which has got a professional look and feel, and you can do it much more quickly because you're using the styles that are associated with the template instead of having to look at each paragraph and figure out what it's supposed to be. Yeah, you can waste a lot of time doing that, I suppose, messing about with Word. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, you really don't want to be doing that. Mm. So, you know, you want to be communicating that information in a professional way and in a clear way um, without spending a lot of time, you know, fixing it up so yeah. it looks nice. I suppose ideally your company will already have a template in place. That's right. So yeah. I always, you know, would use company templates. Mm. I'd never spend time doing my own. Mm -hmm. But what I often find is that the people who put the templates together haven't set up the styles correctly. Right. So one of the things uh, that's important to do is look through. And you know, I, I normally would take the company template and then just. Uh, modify it slightly so that mm -hmm. I can use the styles uh, rather right. than having to set the format of each paragraph type uh, manually. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's the main thing about Word. Yeah. Okay. So, so uh, next one, Excel. So you'd be typically using that for things like uh, risk management. So uh, RAID logs. Uh, RAID is uh, risks, assumptions, uh, issues and dependencies. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are online tools that allow you to do that, which we'll move on to, mm -hmm. but a lot of companies use that for risk management. Things like costing projections, you yep. would typically do in Excel. So learn how to use Excel, learn how to do the formulas. Yeah. In particular, learn how to do array formulas. Right. That's an area where you can put together quite complex things where you've got, say, a value in one column um, and then a value in another column and you're you know, you're doing some analysis. Because right. one of the things that is really important uh, as a project manager is you've got, hopefully, mm. if you're doing it right, you've got loads of data. Yeah. And you want to present that data in a way that tells a story of how the project is going to progress. Mm -hmm. And being able to master formulae and array formulae in Excel is going to help you to put together the charts and the graphs that show the progress of the project uh, um, much more easily. Mm. So are we talking about setting things up from scratch in Excel or the you, sort of ready-made sort of templates that you can modify? Or Usually, you yeah. So usually you're <clears throat> going to have to uh, set those kind of things up yourself. So you need uh, to really be on top of how it works Yeah. from the beginning. Absolutely, you know, you, absolutely, right. yeah. So you've got to bit, get trained up or train yourself up yes. in Excel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And Google is your friend. Any kind of hints and tips that you can get uh, mm. through Google about uh, how to solve a particular problem in Excel yeah. so are always going to be mm. useful. Yeah, yeah. On YouTube as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. <laughs> yeah. Right, okay. So there's two of the classics, I suppose, yep. and then PowerPoint. Yes, that's right. Um, one of the big things uh, to understand is that very few people are going to read all of the project documentation. Mm -hmm. So you need to be able to present that to people, you know, in stand-up meetings or in yeah. remote teleconferences in a digestible form. Now, when I talk about the mastery of PowerPoint, I'm not talking about the whizzy animations and effects and things because that kind of turns people off. Yeah, yeah. I do when, especially when I'm presenting, I will do um, some very uh, subtle animations. So, for example, if I've got three or four bullet points that I want to yeah. talk about, but I want to talk about each one in detail. Yes. Then I will set it up so that it will, you know, reveal each of the bullet points when yes. I um, hit the space bar. 
but I won't do like animations flying in from the side and all that kind of thing because that doesn't really look very professional. Mm. And I think the same thing with uh, PowerPoint as with Word. Your company will normally have a template. Yeah. So just use that. Yeah. You know, yeah. don't make up your own template, yeah. but understand how to use PowerPoint um, to get this idea of how the project is going to progress across to an audience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, very, very important. Yeah. It's funny with PowerPoint, really, isn't it? It's kind of has, has all this capability, all these yeah. fancy things that you can do, and it's sort of tempting our creative side. But uh, there's very few cases where you'd actually be expected, or whether that's where that's desirable. Yeah, like, yeah, absolutely. All these animations and things, because yeah. you know, I've done a lot of sort of in a, in the academic world, that's frowned upon as well. You yes. Know? So you know, I've seen a lot of students who will create these crazy animations and little cartoon characters walking across yeah. the screen and things yeah. and you think well yeah. just don't <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely yeah. i mean some of the best presentations that i've ever seen and this is going back to the kind of pre-powerpoint days mm. was literally a guy who was writing notes on a overhead projector slide as right. he went <laughs> but you know the force of his argument and yeah. the way that he structured it mm. and his presentation meant that the the fact that it was scrawled notes yes. really didn't make any right, difference. Right. Yeah. You've got to uh, focus on the message rather than the kind of fripperies around mm. it. Mm. The other thing that I've seen is uh, people fitting information onto a slide which really doesn't belong on a slide. Yeah. So people taking a table from Excel and yeah. putting it onto a PowerPoint slide, you know, it's really not what it's for. Mm. I remember reading a long, long time ago this kind of maxim of six slides, six points per slide. Yeah. You know, and if you if you start with that and you understand how that works yeah. um, and you can put across the information in that form once you've mastered that, then you can play around with it a bit. Mm. But, you know, that should always be your guideline. Yeah. And if you're uh, straying from that guideline, you should always be asking yourself why. Yeah, I've seen so many presentations where you've got a paragraph of text yeah. and somebody just reads the paragraph mm. to you. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And it's like, yeah. what's what's the point? The, the, the sort of classic office applications I know, it's like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, mm -hmm. and Access, but you're not talking about that. So. Yeah, that's a database application, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. And it's something that I have used in the past. Mm. But nowadays, um, the the kind of things that you, you used to do with Access, there tend to be online tools right. um, that you can use much, much more effectively now. Yeah. Uh, you know, so you've got the kind of web-based tools that yeah. um, that have taken the place of Access. I right. think in in general, probably the last ten years, I haven't felt the need to use Access. Right, right. There's a couple of other things that aren't part of the core Office package that right. I'd like to talk mm. about. Mm. Uh, Visio is a graphics and charting application. Very often, you have to present kind of flow charts or process diagrams. Uh, it's useful for putting those together. Right. Uh, although there are online tools that in some ways are a bit better now. And then an, another thing that is quite useful for is there's a very nice template for producing very simple project plans. Microsoft does have a, uh, a package called Project, yeah. which is a big complex product. Yeah. But if you are going to communicate kind of this is what the project plan looks like at a high level, yeah. then the project template in Visio is actually um, a pretty good way of doing it. Right. And so I, I've, ten I've tended to use that a lot. Okay. Projects more about, isn't that sort of things like calculating critical path and all that sort yeah, of thing? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. So the last of the office uh, suite that I think that you really need to master mm. um, is project itself. Now, Project is a real beast. Mm. Uh, I mean, I, I've been uh, using project management packages for um, 25 years plus now, and really, um, they've got more powerful over yeah. the, that period, but really, they haven't got any easier to use. Mm. And I think that if you aspire to be a top of the range, you know, uh, project manager, then you have to bite the bullet and you've got to master project. Right. I have seen project managers who uh, manage without project, uh, so using spreadsheets, yeah. but really you have to do it because 
it manages the dependencies. Mm. So if you've got uh, a task and then you've got another task which can't start until that one finishes, yeah. then you can manage that dependency. Yeah. And if your the first task slips, then you can automatically see the effect on the second task. Mm. You can manage uh, you can manage resources. So you can say, well, I've got you know 100 tasks. I've got 10 people to do those tasks. I'm going to assign those tasks to different people and see how that uh, works. You know, you can put in when people are available to work, when they're not at work, yeah. and it will automatically um, show you the effect on the timeline of somebody taking yeah. holiday and so yeah. on. So project, obviously, yeah. a, a, what you call an essential uh, project yeah. management tool. Yes, um, absolutely. Are, are there any equivalents or is that the, the one? There are some online tools. The thing that worries me about them is that they all say that they make um, the job of managing projects a lot easier. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, I don't think that, that that's going to happen. You know, the, the, managing the dependencies uh, between the tasks on projects and managing the resource allocation, you know, so that you've got, if somebody is unavailable to work on the task, they put somebody else in. That's inherent a part of the complexity mm -hmm. of um, managing projects. And I think that you just have to suck it up. Yeah. You know, there isn't there isn't an alternative. There's work to do. There's detail that you have to cover. Yeah. You're going to manage it in project, or you're going to manage it in some other tool. Really, it doesn't really matter. You mm -hmm. have to. You know, you've just got to deal with that. And you say projects a bit of a beast. So, yeah. do, I mean, would you recommend a training course for that, or is it something you can <laughs> train yourself to do again? Like. I mean, it probably is worth a training course because there's so much mm. stuff um, around, for example, um, the reporting. Yeah. It's going to take you a long time to learn. Mm. Now, you know, for me, I've been using Project for you know, yeah. 15 years and other project management packages before that. So I kind of know what they do and yeah. know what their yeah. capabilities are. And I suppose that the complexity of Project has grown as I have had more experience with it. But so if you were starting now, I would say, yeah, a, a course would be uh, yeah, mm. would be beneficial. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right. So moving on from Office, then, um, what about more specific tools for you, you know projects? So there's some really good online tools now mm. um, that you can use, and one in particular that I've been getting into very uh, seriously is a package called Jira, and that's spelled J-I-R-A. Right. It grew out of a uh, an issue management tool. Mm. So uh, basically, you could log a call, like on an IT help desk, mm -hmm. And so there would be a description of it, it would be prioritized, and then it would go through some workflows and get assigned to people and get resolved. Very, very simple. But it's actually grown into a very uh, flexible and very capable tool which will really help you to manage projects. Mm -hmm. So you can create issues in it, you can put those issues through a workflow, and then you can assign those issues to people so mm -hmm. you can see what's happening to each individual issue and who's dealing with it and so on. And the great thing is that a project is going to have you know, hundreds maybe thousands of these issues mm. and it's got great um, reporting and kind of graphing tools that really help you on an hour by hour basis mm. to see where your project is. Right. So you could at any moment you could say right you know I know that um, we are uh, in the next two weeks we're supposed to be doing 50 of these issues out of a total of 500. Mm. And I know that you know 10 of them have not started, five of them are in progress, 25 of them are um, in QA, so they're waiting to be checked, uh, the rest are done, and these three are blocked because there's some kind of query or there's some issue to do with them. And you can just see all of that uh, on one dashboard right. and you, it's really really powerful and you can get so much information about how fast mm. the team's working and you can then say well if I've if, if it's taking me two weeks to do 50 then it will take me you know 10 weeks to do 250 and you know you can really really get a lot of uh, really good detail out of that 
So physically the way that works is do you have your sort of team, your team members feeding into that? It's an online tool, so yeah. everyone has an account. Yeah. And one of the disciplines that you have to get the team into is making sure that when they pick up a task that they assign it to themselves mm -hmm. so that nobody else picks it up. Yeah. So you might have a team of um, you know, five software developers mm -hmm. and they could all do any task. So uh, you don't want two people doing the same mm -hmm. thing. And moving it into the correct status, mm -hmm. handing it on to the next person. Yeah. And you need to get the team to, to do that in a disciplined way. Mm -hmm. The way I usually do that is uh, I have a short meeting in the morning, which is called a stand-up meeting, because mm -hmm. you stand up. And I would look at the status of all the issues in JIRA mm -hmm. at that meeting. Then you would just go through each member of the team and say, well, it says here that you're working on these issues. How's that going? And they might say, oh, well, I've finished that one. Mm -hmm. you know, and you just say, well, can you update the status of the issue? Right. And then after a very short period of time, they just get used to doing it. Right, yeah. yeah. I have seen people who don't kind of enforce that discipline. Then it very quickly yeah. becomes very unclear what's happening. Yeah. And then you might as well not use the tool yeah, at all. Yeah. It's very much dependent on that, that level of discipline. Yeah, People that's buying right. into yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And does it, is it a very kind of, is it user friendly? Does it have a sort of graphical presentation? Is it? I think it's very user friendly. Mm -hmm. Say, for example, you've got a project that is split up into four different components. Mm -hmm. Then for each issue, you can say, well, this issue is to do with implementing this component. And all you do is you type and it automatically will fill in the details, you know, and say, oh, you know, all mm -hmm. that kind of type head stuff and everything. Yeah. All the fields do that, and it's really, really right. slick. Right. And then the reporting, you know, you've got really nice graphs and charts that show you exactly where you are, exactly how you're doing, uh, give you projections mm. as to, you know, where you'll be at the end of two weeks, four weeks, or whatever. Really good stuff. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. So that's something you've used yourself, and it's been effective. It's, yes, it's really, oh, re really mm. effective. Mm. And I think it's not just effective as project manager, it's effective for the team as mm. well, because they can see the progress on mm. the project. One of the problems when you've got a really big project is it's very hard to keep that momentum going. Yeah. Because people come in and you know, it's like a nine month project. And they say, well, you know, <laughs> it doesn't really matter what mm. I do on one particular day. Mm. Whereas if you can see this progress yeah. that's going through and you can see these issues, you know, shifting through, mm. you can see the flow, yeah. then you can start to build up this yeah. real sense of momentum and so, this pride in getting these mm. things going and, and going at a velocity. Yeah. So quite a good motivating yeah. factor as well. Yeah, it is, yeah. you know, and you can print out graphs and you can put them up on the wall and all that kind right. of stuff. Right. Okay. Yeah, it's good. Excellent. Oh, that sounds good. Mm -hmm. What else then? So um, there are another couple of equivalent tools that mm -hmm. I've used, not to the extent I've used Jira, but they're also very good. So Microsoft uh, do one, uh, this is for software development, called mm -hmm. Team Foundation Server. I mean, you can use Jira for anything. Mm -hmm. uh, Microsoft obviously being a software development yeah. company, uh, it's more tailored towards that. There's also uh, a company called Rally, uh, and they do a, uh, a project workbench, which is very similar. Mm -hmm. okay. Moving on to uh, kind of other collaboration mm -hmm. tools now, things that allow you to manage and store documents online, really, really useful. Mm -hmm. So here we're talking about Google Drive, yep. which I have used, Dropbox, a lot mm -hmm. of people use. Yeah. Uh, if you're in the Microsoft world, you can use SharePoint mm -hmm. or Office 360. Right. Um, good thing about uh, Google Drive is that you've got all the uh, the Google applications, yeah. so Google Docs, mm -hmm. um, Google Sheets, which is their spreadsheet application. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I've used that for, which has been really effective, is if you've got a team that's doing, say, a planning exercise and they can't be all in the same room, you can open a, uh, a spreadsheet in Google Sheets mm -hmm. and each person that is editing that spreadsheet, you actually see where they are, what cell that they're in. Right. And so you can actually collaborate in making an estimate. So say you've got you know, 50 things you need to estimate. Right. Well, one of the ways that I've done it is uh, you have like a voting thing. So everyone's got their own column to right. say, well, I think it's going to take this long. And then you just have a column that averages them. You know, so yeah. you can do really nice things like right. that. And everyone then can contribute. Everyone can see what everyone else right. is doing. Um, even though they're not in the same room together. 
Oh, I didn't realise you could do that with mm. uh, Google Drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, okay. it's, it's a really nice feature. And it works with the docs as well, you know, yeah. so you, you yeah. can do that with you know, their text documents. Mm. The equivalent of Word. Are they compatible with Word documents? Can you import Word documents? Into uh, you can, yes. In Google. Yeah, that's yeah. right. You can import them in, and then if you want to edit them there, it converts mm. it into the, its own format, but yeah. then you can export them out. So one of the key things is you can have a conversation about mm. any aspect of a project, really, and people can go away getting a completely different idea of yeah. what was said. Using these tools and you know, all of them really, mm. is about reflecting the conversations that you've had and saying, well, I've heard what you said and I think that this is what, what this means. Yeah. So, you know, I've heard that you have a demonstration to a client on this date, right? This is what needs to happen in order for that demonstration to mm. be successful. All of the tools are coming together to that point, you know, so that everyone understands how they are contributing to the success yeah. of the project. And everyone has got in their minds where the dangers are, where the risks are that are going to mm. affect the project and what they're going to do about yeah. that. It's very often it is worth uh, taking the time to do minutes mm. of meetings yeah. and at least summarising, like, the action points and who mm. was going to do stuff, mm. you know, and the decisions. But... If you're just, you know, you've got something more general, then you can just record the whole thing. It yeah. saves a lot of time. Mm. And I think that that brings us on to another kind of key mm. tool. One of the things that the new agile community, mm. so these are people who are trying to do software um, in particular, but it's applicable to other kinds of projects, in a much more responsive kind of way of uh, done, is said, why are we doing all this formal documentation that no mm. one's going to look at? Why don't we just like put something on a whiteboard and then take a photograph of, mm -hmm. of it? And that's a technique that I use a lot now. So I do a lot of meetings and workshops, mm. and at the end of the, them, there'll be something that's on the board, and I will take a photograph and then post that in the team collaboration mm -hmm. space, so it could be on, uh, on Google Drive, for example. Right. So that there's a record of that uh, straight away. And some of these tools will even do um, text recognition mm -hmm. within photographs that you've oh, taken. Right. Okay. So then that information becomes mm. searchable as well, mm. which is fantastic. Mm. You know, you've got that record of what was said and the things that were discussed. And uh, you can return to that, um, you know, if there are any kind of clarifications needed. Yeah. So would that be in addition to circulating minutes of the meeting or... Instead of. Say, for example, you were discussing what kind of bridge mm -hmm. you were going to build in a specific situation. You would say, well, you know, and somebody was drawing on the board and there were different designs. And then say, yeah, this is the design. And then uh, you would just take a photograph and say, these are the options. And then you'd write down, this is the decision that was taken. Mm -hmm. these, are, these people are going to go away and do these things. Yeah. So it's a combination of the mm -hmm. two, but you're not having to open up Visio and get somebody to draw out a nice picture of something that yeah. somebody scribbled on a, mm -hmm. on a whiteboard. Mm -hmm. uh, was there anything else you wanted to cover in this? Uh... I think that there's another thing about collaboration. So mm -hmm. one of the things that I've uh, worked on as well is, you know, like uh, Wikipedia. Yeah. So you can get platforms that allow you to create wikis for projects. Right. So one of the ones that I've used is Confluence, right. and that's really, really useful because what you do is you allow all of your team to collaborate mm -hmm. on that kind of web space, and they can create how-to guides, they can create startup guides, mm -hmm. you know, so that when pe new people come into the team, they have got these instructions, mm -hmm. and they're very easy to edit and yeah. add information to. Mm -hmm. What you might do is you've got a small team and you say, well, when you come into the team, these are the tools you use, this is how you set them up. And then somebody comes in and they try and do it and then there's like three steps missing, mm -hmm. so it's fine, right, I'll put those steps in. And the other the good thing about these collaboration platforms mm -hmm. is they have a full history. Mm -hmm. So you can see exactly uh, who did what when. And if there's any queries, you say, well, I see you made that mm -hmm. um, change at this point. You know, what was that about? Mm -hmm. you know, so it's not about like blaming people, but no. it's just about, okay, if, if, if the information's changed and I don't really know why, I can go and ask the person. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So those kind of tools are really good as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of them, 
Um, so Confluence, it's from the same company that uh, produces Jira, which is right. a company called Atlassian. The two tools are very integrated. Mm. So for example, if you've got a graph that's in Jira and you yeah. want it to be on your, uh, your wiki page, mm. automatically updating, you can just put it in as like a little widget. Right. And then every time you look at the page, it will show this graph in its latest state. Mm. So it's very much geared towards that kind of business application. You know, project application. It's got a load of tools and plugins which yeah. are specifically for, you know, I am setting up a whole load of web pages mm. about this project. Yeah. And, you know, anything that anyone needs to tell anyone, yeah. they can just create a page and, mm -hmm. and, and do it, yeah. you know. Right. And they've got specific templates like mm -hmm. how-to guides and, yeah. you know, all that kind of okay. stuff. Really, really nice. Mm -hmm. Because it's so easy to do, people do it. Mm. I mean, one of the things that we used to uh, do on a previous project is we would have a, a checklist. So every time that we did a new release of the software, we had this checklist mm -hmm. that said, these are the steps that you need to go through, these are the things you need to check. Mm -hmm. And then at the start of uh, like developing a new release, we'd say, right, do we need to add anything to the checklist? Mm -hmm. You know, are we going to change anything in this? And then we'd add some items. And then when we were doing the release, we'd mm. go through the checklist and then maybe we encountered the problem. And so, right, let's put another three checks in mm. to make sure that next time we don't have that problem. Mm -hmm. And it was all, you know, it was so fast to do yeah. because you, you could just log in and do it. And if you, there was any problems, you knew that there was that history. You could always revert to a previous mm. version if you got it wrong. Yeah. So I suppose to sum up the sort of advantages of some of these collaboration tools, mm. I mean, you're, you're saving time. I yes. Yeah. You're um, eliminating inaccuracies, I suppose, or misunderstandings. Mm. And I suppose you're creating a feeling of ownership as well of yeah. the project, not mm -hmm. just for the manager, but for the people, the team. For the team as know, well. That's, yes. a, that's a motivating factor, isn't it? They have, yes. they feel they're involved. Would you say they're sort of the main advantages? Uh, is there anything uh, else? As well as that, it's that being clear about the communications. Mm -hmm. One of the things that somebody told me a long time ago is that like a requirement is a reminder to have a conversation. If something's important enough to write down, you know, even if it's like the smallest note, then that's a reminder to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you could, instead of having to build this massive document so yeah. for something very complicated, mm -hmm. you might just say, look, talk to X about something. Mm. You know, and because that's it, there's so little barrier to you doing mm. that, you you know people will do it, mm -hmm. and then they will have that conversation, and then they say, well, okay, well this is a one-off. We're never going to do it again. It's mm. not worth documenting in loads of detail. Yeah. Or they might say, well, you know, we need this is information we need to hand over. Mm. Let's you know put some time into it. Mm. So it's that clarity of communication, mm. I think. You know, and there's and and you're removing those barriers for mm -hmm. people being able to communicate. Mm. Is that it for this? this yes, I session? think that if you can confidently say that you can use those tools, mm. then you can you know you can call yourself a project manager. Yeah.